How were you able to get the $50,000 in order to start up this business? What kind of marketing did you have to do in order to land your first deal? You're making anywhere between $15,000, $20,000 a month. What are some of your other expenses as a business owner? What are some of the things that you wish you knew before you started your own business? Have you ever thought about starting your own event venue business? Yeah, well, after spending almost $20,000 on my wedding, I became super curious about the business model. And today I'm gonna to be talking to the owner of this event center, Simone, and how she makes almost $200,000 per year with her venue. She's gonna break down everything we need to know about the business, like the startup costs, how much money she makes, and much more. Let's get into it. So everybody, I'm standing here with one of my good friends, Simone. We go back about 10 years. And recently, Simone started an event venue business. Simone, what type of events do you throw here? Mainly baby showers, birthdays, and wedding receptions are our most popular events that take place here. And how big of a space do you have here? How many people can you host? So our venue is 2,900 square feet. We can accommodate up to 150 attendees seated banquet style and 200 attendees theater style. Now, do you rent or do you own this building? So I rent out the building. Now, what were your startup costs to get into this space? What did you have to do to get things ready in order to turn this space, which will have a picture on the screen of like what it looked like before, but what went into developing this space? What were your startup costs? I would say our startup cost was around somewhere around 50,000. Um, and that comes from the flooring. We had to take up the carpet. It was green carpet here first. We took that up, put down laminate flooring. We had to get the chairs. Chairs were another expense. Chairs are like 25, could be $30 per chair. We had to get 200. We had to take down the stage in here. We had to paint the walls. We had to redo the electrician. We had to do the AC. We had to redo the bathrooms. For us, um, our startup cost was around 50000 how were you able to get the $50,000 in order to start up this business? So I was blessed. I have family and friends that all chipped in. They gave me money for um, startup. I also had savings, but I also had home equity. So I was able to take out some of my home equity to use towards the business as well. So I know a lot of people, when they're first getting started in business, 50,000 seems like a lot of money, especially when you're not making any money yet. Yeah. So how did that make you feel? Like how much of a risk did that feel for you to start, put 50, thousand into a venue without you know making a single dollar honestly I was scared I was extremely nervous that was literally um, we opened in November of 2020 by that time I had exhausted all of my finances I really did not have much after that I was really um, praying to God that we could receive uh, receive a return investment because that is a lot of money it was a big risk however I really believed in the event venue I've always wanted to do this so even though I knew it was a financial burden I took that risk anyway and I'm glad I did because our first client was actually Netflix they were shooting a movie right down the street they were walking past they needed a center for their um, their stunt double their stunt it was their stunt team so they needed a place for their stunt team to be able to sit down relax um, in between shooting and that money literally paid my mortgage because like I said I had really used all of my money what made you determine this was the right location for you to set up an event venue what determined that was a pricing um, I had looked at a few a couple of different venues prior to finding this location other venues were either similar size some of them are similar smaller, a lot, they cost a lot more. I'll just say maybe they wanted an extra two to $3,000 a month. Um, before I got a space, I already knew in mind, I wanted a space that can hold at least 100 attendees. And that comes from my background in hotels. When we would have calls about baby showers and birthdays, it would always be around 80 to 100. So I already had that number in mind. I need a space that can at least accommodate 100 attendees based on my professional background. So that made me start looking for places that was at least 2,500 square feet. Once I found a place that was 2,500 square feet, this place here, this place just actually 
fit everything. It had the blank space. It had no pillars. It had the back area from a prep kitchen. This used to be a church. So it already had the restrooms in the back. It had the DJ booth. So when I was looking at a space, I was looking at a space where I could really come in, just put some paint on the walls, do the flooring, and then everything else would be done. And so that was the thing that really stuck out about this place. I wouldn't have to tear down walls. I wouldn't have to add things in here um, too much. That's what made me choose this location versus other locations. Also, I knew parking. I know a lot of times when people have different venues, they have trouble with parking. Because we're in a plaza, we have a lot of parking. We have unlimited parking, actually. And because we have events on the weekend, all the other businesses are closed, which is perfect for the guests. So when looking for the space, I was thinking about my guests. Did you use a realtor to find this space or did you look for it yourself? No, so I started driving around. I did not look um, use a realtor. I was using Loop, LoopNet and just different other places online. However, I started feeling like I wasn't successful. So then I just got in my car and I started driving to different areas. I was looking everywhere, but I was just in my car, driving around, going to places, looking inside, taking down numbers, emailing the leasing agents, and that's how I was looking for different places. So when you found this space, what was your first step? Did you call the landlord? Did you see a for lease sign outside? And uh, how was the negotiations with the owner or the current tenant in this space? So they had a, I guess, a management company. And so I had to reach out to their management company. And so their management company was basically like the third party, which was amazing because he kind of walked me through it because this was my first time leasing a, a unit. And so I didn't know. I remember telling him what my budget was a month. And then he told me the cost of the venue. And I was like, well, that's out of my budget. And then he said, well, it's okay. You know, that's all about negotiation. And so when he told told me that I was just acting I started asking questions and he was kind of helping me too because he was telling me things and I was telling him things that I wanted in my lease so when it came to negotiation um, I feel like I was blessed with them being able to negotiate because a the agent kind of helped me um, Two, this space had been sitting over a year prior to me getting in there so I think they just wanted a tenant yeah. so uh, negotiations they were not um, they weren't hard because they just more so wanted someone to get in the unit. And I feel like in this market too, with so many people going to a remote culture with their companies that now in this market, we kind of have the leverage of saying, mm -hmm. okay, we can come in. You, I know you don't have a tenant. Let me come in. Let me, you know, offer you a good deal so that you can at least pay the expenses that you have to keep this venue going. Can you talk to us about the terms of your lease? Because I think a lot of people think that like leasing a commercial space is very similar to a residential space, but you and I know that's a little bit different. So what are some of the terms of your lease? Like maybe the period, the price and so on. So my lease is a five year lease. Um, so for example, like, you know, residential, you only have a year. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a year lease. And I feel like with most places, it's either a three to five year lease. Pricing, they charge $3,300 a month for this unit. And this is, like I said, it's 2,900 square feet. Did they give you like a tenant improvement budget or anything in your lease in order to kind of make it an attractive option for you? They gave me windows. So prior, and when you all see this space, you and I'll show you even before and after pictures, this um, unit was boarded up. And I told them that I would not take this unit unless they put in windows. And because it's a venue, you needed natural light. Yes. And I know that was a big expense for them. Um, they even said, Simone, this has cost us a lot of money because it was about $30,000 for them to just put windows inside of the building. What's the timeline in between lease, improvement and then actually finding somebody to book the space. I got the space in June of 2021. When we got the space, there was no electricity. So we didn't have electrical July and August. So for the first two months, it was very little work being done in the space. By the end of August, the last week, that's when we finally got electricity. So that's when we started putting down the floors. So now we're going into September, September, I'm sorry, let me backtrack, let me pull it back. So July came, that's when I applied for our business license, our stuff that we needed to operate. We had to get a fire inspection done, we had to get a water inspection, so we applied in July. They got back to us in September. Towards the end of September, 
there was a inspection called the backflow and that one failed. And so because that failed, we still couldn't open. And so that took our landlord another three or four weeks to get that complete. Once that was complete and towards like the middle end of October, then we had to do our fire inspection. Once our fire inspection was complete, we were able to get our business license. And so by that time, it's November. So about four to five months. During that five month period, were you paying rent or were you kind of like rent forgiven until you started operating? Correct, I was rent forgiven until I got my business license because we experienced challenges with us getting their business license, so yes. Simone, how did you end up getting your first client? Like what kind of marketing did you have to do in order to land your first deal? What we used honestly was Instagram and Facebook and Google ads. However, I will say Instagram has been our best friend. We have Google ads running, we have Facebook ads running, um, word to mouth, but I would say 85 to 90% of our clients all come from Instagram. And so how much do you charge for your booking? Can you walk us through your prices, maybe some of your add-ons and stuff like that? So our pricing, for example, Fridays, I'm sorry, not Fridays, but Saturdays is our most popular day. So if you just want the venue itself, just the standard items, which are the tables, chairs, linen, is $1,700. Our pricing is also based on the amount of attendees we can hold because we can hold up to 150 attendees. So Saturdays, 1,700, and that's just our standard package, tables, chairs, linen, sound system, microphone, Wi-Fi is also included. We also include your six foot tables for food, and you have plenty of parking. We also have our baby shower package, and that's $2,000. And that comes with the balloon garland, your custom backdrop, you get your throne chairs, you also have your baby tabletop for your dessert tables, or if you just wanna sit at the table. So that comes with that, but then it also comes with charger place on the table. Then you get your linen, your runner, sound system, microphone, up lights and everything else that comes with the standard package. Our most expensive package is our gold package. So that's 2,900, so it's $2,950. That's the best package because you just walk in and you walk out. So with that package, it's all custom. You get a custom color, you get your backdrop balloon garland, you get centerpieces, you get your dinnerware, your shaping dishes, your burner, cleanups included with that package. Um, that's the ideal package for most clients because they walk in, everything's decorated, and then they walk out. So packages really range from 1,700 to um, almost 3,000. What's the most amount of bookings that you've ever had in one single month? May, June, and July. Every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday was fully booked. Although we've only been in business a year, um, we learned that May, June, and July are the busiest seasons May being graduation season, June and July, you have your weddings, you have baby showers, you have birthdays, mostly weddings. Even for going into next year, we've already had half of June book for weddings. And how much money did you make during those months? Well, I will say this, I shot myself in the foot because during February um, of this year, it was two, 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 two. It was like a big thing, uh, you know, February 2nd, 22 of 22, so 22222. Two, two, two. So I did this big 222 special where I made everything $1,222 and then everyone booked it. So once they booked it, because as you can, as you know, like I said, the packages ran from 1,700 to um, 3,000 and they were getting it for $1,200. All of those dates in June and July were really booked during that special. So I really shot myself in the foot because we could have definitely made a lot more. We ran around like 15 to 20,000 during that time. And that's just, like I said, a lot of that was bad business on my part, but yeah. it was my first year. I live and I learn, but yes. I mean, yeah, $20,000 in one month as a first year business owner, a lot of people would say that's a pretty good month. How does that compare with the money you were making when you were in corporate America? I did not see half of the money that I'm seeing now. I will say that. But and I will also say with corporate America, because prior to me opening the event center, I did meeting and events in hotels. And a lot of times my goal for the year was around anywhere from 600,000 to 800,000. So when I was working at like the Hiltons, the W's, the Westons, I would have these goals. I need to bring in um, $800,000 worth in events for room bookings and just catering. So I'm bringing you all in. 800,000 and I'm making $50,000 a year. So now I'm bringing myself in, I'm, I'm not bringing in 800,000, 
but I'm bringing more. I'm bringing home more than fifty thousand dollars a year. How much money do you spend on your marketing? You mentioned you run some Instagram ads, which are very successful for you. How much are you spending overall? If you think about all the marketing you're doing, mm, that's a good question. About three hundred, about three to four hundred dollars in Instagram ads a month. And that's because, like I said, Instagram is our most popular social media. And so when we go back to your pricing and what you charge for events, how does that compare with maybe other venues in the area? Would you say you're more on a higher price point? Are you kind of lowballing the competition to get more clients? Or are you kind of like steady with everyone else? What would you say is your, your pricing strategy? So my pricing strategy is definitely steady to everyone else, especially when it comes to non-decorated events. Prior to doing my pricing, I did like a, a market analysis, a market research that came from my hotel background. So I went to other venues with comparable sizes. I went to their websites. So I'm looking at venues that can see 100 and 150 attendees. I'm seeing what they're charging. We're on market when it comes to rate. We're not really below or high. So Mom, let's talk a little bit about your business. What are you registered as? So I'm registered as Grand Experience Event Center, LLC. And do you have any employees or your team? So honestly, it's really just myself, one other person, and that's it. So we come in, we do the decorating and the setup. We did hire cleaners. Our cleaners come in and clean up the event venue. Yeah, so on a good month, you're making anywhere between $15,000, $20,000 a month. Your rent is about $3,500 a month. So sounds like a lot of profit what are some of your other expenses as a business owner so some of our other expenses of course we have wi-fi we have your water you have your electricity um another one is our laundry because we have to take linen weekly to the cleaners so we can get those clean we have to sometimes purchase new um linen because uh, like I said, baby showers are our most popular business. So we have white linen for baby showers and then white linen just doesn't sometimes get as clean. So then we have to purchase new linen. I would say the biggest um, expense other than, of course, the monthly bills would be the linen for um, and the chair covers. So I'm sitting at this beautiful table. We have plates, we have the linen, we have the flowers, candles, water, mm -hmm. and of course these grand chairs, which yeah. really makes the venue. Um, how much does all this stuff kind of like cost, like the, I guess, the accessories to the wedding venue? Well, when it comes to the linen, um, we use a wholesale site, and so this is actually $2, and the plates, $1, nice. <laughs> and the glasses, dollars. So the chairs, of course, was a one-time expense as well. These were like $800, but it was such a great investment. I noticed around um, two or three months into the event venue, everyone kept asking, do we have these chairs? And of course, we didn't have the chairs, but once I saw how much of a request it was, I got the chairs yeah. and now I say we use these chairs just about every event. So of course we're in a venue, people come here to have fun, they may have a little bit much to drink and of course accidents can happen, fights can happen. Um, how? What are you doing to protect yourself in an event that somebody gets injured or they want to sue you? Do you have business insurance? Do you make your uh, guests sign some type of agreement before coming in? Talk to us about some of the, your liability protection. Before you book, you have to go through our different policies and it states by booking our venue, you agree to certain policies. And one policy is that once you enter the venue, you have 30 minutes to let us know if anything's, if there are any defects, if there's any problems, otherwise you take full responsibility for any damages or liability that comes with it. For example, let's say that someone says, well, the floor was messed up. There was something on the floor and I tripped over it. It was a defect to the floor. Well, did you contact us 30 minutes prior after entering? Because like I said, with, within 30 minutes, we do a walkthrough. We do a walkthrough to see if everything is to your standard. Is it clean? Are the tables set? Is everything um, replenished in the bathrooms? So that's one thing. Another thing we do have is general liability. Um, when it comes to drinking and alcohol, we make sure everyone has a licensed bartender with insurance because they are fully liable for everyone that drinks at the event. Because 
we don't handle food and beverage. So that's on your bartender and your food and beverage persons to have license and to be licensed and insured. Now, what about on the opposite end? Let's say, for example, you have a guest here and they may punch a hole in the wall or break a chair. Or God forbid, maybe stain one of your $800 chairs. Mm -hmm. What happens in that case? What, how are you protecting your, your assets? The policy states, if anything's damaged, the damages start off at $1,000. So if the client or their attendees damage anything, the starting price is $1,000. And then once we assess the damages, it depends on the range. So they're agreeing to that when they're booking as well. Simone, did you go to college? So yes, I attended Georgia State. Um, I went as a hospitality major. So if you have to go back and think about your journey so far, do you think you need a college degree in order to start an event venue? Absolutely not. I say no because I learned everything about the business working. I worked in hotels. I was able to learn contracts. I was able to learn the language of just different um, venue terms. I was able to learn everything. What was maybe your biggest challenge with getting into the event venue business? Was there something in particular that was just a thorn in your side? The biggest challenge, there were two, I would say the two biggest challenges was one, finding a venue. It was hard for me to find a venue because I had no prior leasing history. Some of the um, different plazas, they wanted someone with leasing history, they wanted business history. Because my business had no history, they some of them didn't want to take a risk. Another thing was the venue sizing. I had to make sure I had the perfect size that could accommodate a certain amount of attendees and other places with the sizes that I was looking for was really expensive. Um, also, some places wanted to me to pay a higher deposit because I was at high risk because I'm a first time um, business owner leasing something. I would say the process to even find the venue took from February until June. So that took about four to five months for me to actually find a venue. And I was actively looking, actively driving around. So that was one of the biggest challenges was actually finding a venue. Secondly was getting our business license. That took a, a whole process because sometimes you don't know what you're getting into with these units. You, you're, this is your first time going into it. You don't know everything that's required. So of course, this is my first time. I didn't know what was going on. So then the county saying, well, this needs to be complete. That needs to be complete. And it's like one thing, we complete one task and then another task comes and another task comes. And so then that puts opening behind. And so now it's like, oh my God, I need to open. I need to make some money. I need to make my money back. But um, you just have to grow with the punches. So those were like the two biggest like thorn in my side was finding the venue and um, just getting it open with everything for the county. Yeah, and obviously you were able to overcome some of those challenges by just sticking with it, going to venue to venue, not giving up, continually growing throughout the process with the business license and just figuring out, talking to the county and the state. What advice would you give to someone who maybe want to start an event venue in their city or in their state? What are some of the things that you wish you knew before you started your own business? Well, I will say, one, if you're looking to open up an event venue, I would say don't do it just for the money because you can do anything for money, but when you're doing events, you really have to be passionate about it. You really have to listen to your customers. When we first started, we had packages that really no one would book. Until I started listening to my customers, figuring out what they wanted, um, that's when we started getting more bookings. And even so, I believe my passion shows because I have people that will tell me between my venue and another venue, it's the same price. However, they enjoy my customer service. They enjoy working with me. They enjoy the work that they've seen. So if you're gonna do it, I would say be passionate about it because that passion is gonna show, that passion is gonna make people want to book with you. That's gonna make your business grow. So your your event venues open on the weekends, right? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, those are gonna be your prime time hours yeah. and your bookings. Mm -hmm. um, does that mean you only work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday or how many hours a week are you working? I definitely work every single day. I work Sunday to Sunday. Um, so again, that's why I say be passionate about it because I do work every single day. 
Okay, we have events Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Monday through Thursdays, we're here for site tours. We have late site tours ending at 8 p.m. because we want to be open for people to get off work. A lot of times people work Monday through Thursdays. They don't get off till 5 until 6. So we have to accommodate site tours at 7 p.m., 8 p.m. I've even done site tours as late as 9 p.m. because Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, it's event time. So we we work. I work every single day. Yeah. So I think a lot of times people get into business and they say, I want to be my own boss. I want to set my <laughs> schedule. I want to have control of my time. I'm tired of working the nine to five. So what is your reaction to that? Like, is that true when you start a business that now, you know, you control your set schedule, you have your own time and all that stuff? If you want to run a good business, if you want clients, the whole you get to do whatever you want when you want that is not true it goes out the window because there are some days where i want to let's say just sit in the house go to the gym get my nails done and then i'll have a client they'll say well hey i only have today i'm going out of town i want to book it i want my business so you could come right now so whatever i'm doing i'm dropping it and i'm coming over to my business and like i said you want to respond in a timely manner so when you're getting these emails when you're getting these phone calls you just never know there have been times where i've been on the phone with someone at 7 30 at night and because i've talked to them we're walking through they're on the website they will book it right then and there so let's say i didn't answer that phone call and say well i only want to work from nine to five i could have missed that booking so to say that um, you just get to create your own schedule. I, I don't believe that's true. If someone is thinking to themselves, man, I don't know where to start. I don't think I can really get into this business. I don't know if I have what it takes. What would you say to that person that is doubting themselves, maybe scared to take the first step in entrepreneurship? I would say, don't be scared, become disciplined because discipline will take you far. There are times where I felt like I didn't know what to do or where to go, but I gave myself tasks every day and every day I came closer and closer and closer. And sometimes it may not feel like you're doing anything, but you are because some, some one thing you may learn, some you may learn something today, but you may not use the knowledge until a month or two from now, but you're learning each day. I would say if you're scared, just become disciplined. Simone, I believe you're gonna inspire a lot of people watching. Thank you, Simone. I appreciate you doing this. Well, thank you for coming to see me today. It was a pleasure. Yeah. So there you have it, guys. That's how you can start an event venue business. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Coming up next, I have two more videos that you're going to enjoy. So check those out if you haven't already. And I'll see you over there.